scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says, for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Is it not in your Bible that some trust in horses and others chariots? Do you know how powerful a horse is? Do you know how dexterous a king's chariot is? Yet the Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. And so, I understand a bit about spiritual empowerment. I know what it means to be anointed I know what it means to find power with God. There's no time to discuss with you my journey into the ministry of power and the miraculous, but I will tell you, I want to share with you one lesson I have found. I have watched people pray sincerely so for power. I have watched people fast sincerely so for power. I've watched people cry. I've watched people carry seeds to a man of God for power. And all these are powerful principles. And yet at the end of all these spiritual activities, they never seem to contact genuine spiritual power. And for many years, I kept asking, what could be wrong? What is wrong with a man fasting so much, desiring the power of God? What is wrong with a man praying for extended periods desiring the power of God? What is wrong with using your seed as an expression of honor to connect to an anointing? Why then is my life still bankrupt of genuine spiritual empowerment even after all of these activities? And then the Lord took me through a journey and that journey ended in one single verse. Please listen very carefully, especially for many of you who have the call of God upon your life. This might be a deliverance service for you. Otherwise, for many people, they would labor in the spirit only to be angry after many years. That's why several people get angry and offended at God and at church. They say, if it's prayer, I have prayed. If it's fasting, I have fasted. I've done everything I know to do to access genuine power from God. But what then is the missing link? Let me show you Psalm 89 and verse 20. May I please request if you can that you turn your Bible or just find a way of connecting to that scripture. Your devices, whatever it is that you have to use. I just want you to look at that scripture very carefully. Psalm 89. That scripture holds the key, verse 20. You have that down? I'm reading from KJV. So if you have KJV, I want us to read the first four words that you see there. I have found David. Ready? One to read. I have found David. Hold on. One more time. I have found David. I have found David. Now read with me the next two words. My servant. 
So if we read it all together, it reads, I have found David, my servant. This is a very profound scripture. David was a man who understood the anointing from a shepherd. He transited until he became a king and a very noble one. Hallelujah. That in Israel today, they consider the city of David, the star of David in fact, is imprinted upon their flags. This was a man who did business with God until he became mighty. But there is a very profound secret here. And this is what I want to show you. He said, I have found David. But the anointing will not come upon David. I am looking for my servant. I found David a long time ago. But the anointing is not looking for David. The anointing does not come upon David. The anointing comes upon my servant. I have found Joshua Selman, but I'm still looking for my servant. I have found a preacher, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a businessman, but I'm still looking for my servant. So he says, I have found David. No problem finding David. No problem finding Jacob. No problem finding Gideon, but I'm still searching for my servant. The oil does not look for men. The oil looks for a heart condition. Listen carefully. The anointing does not look for men. The anointing was authorized to respond to a certain heart posture, a certain heart condition that no matter what the geography of your call is, if you do not assume that posture in the spirit, you cannot be genuinely anointed. I have found David, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a very vibrant man of God in Dallas, but I'm still looking for my servant. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, when you read from verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. My question is, why will he have to relate the death of someone or something to an encounter with the Lord? He would have just said, I saw the Lord. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ego died, I saw the Lord. In the year that lust died, I saw the Lord. In the year that spiritual complacency died, I saw the Lord. The price for seeing him and encountering him is not just searching for him. It's killing what has tried to be him. Listen carefully. The jealousy of God mandates that he becomes Lord absolutely in your life. So if he has to join the queue with a plethora of other mundane flesh attributes like pride, vain glory and the rest, you will never be able to find and even host his glory. Is someone learning already? I have found David. I have found Isaac. I have found the businessman. I have found the sincere pastor, the apostle, the evangelist but I'm still looking for my servant. And he can be looking for his servant for 10 years. He can be looking for his servant for 20 years. He can even be looking for a servant for your entire lifetime. Apostle, why has the anointing not come upon my life in spite of my prayer? Because you have not allowed that prayer to turn you from David into his servant. Why has my fasting not produced results? Because the fasting has not been allowed to turn you from David to his servant. I have found David, my servant. I used to think that the anointing looks for men. But I found out from scripture that the anointing does not necessarily look for men. The anointing was designed to pursue a particular heart condition, a particular posture. In this case, a heart that the Bible simply calls my servant. Do you know what it takes to be the servant of God? Now, many people erroneously, because of the revelation of concepts like sonship, uh, when you talk about servanthood, uh, people generally frown at it because they say, no, I'm not a servant, I'm a son. But when you study your Bible properly, you will learn that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. 
the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, who although being God, that he considered it not robbery to be God, but he humbled himself. So Jesus demonstrated that he was a son indeed by becoming a servant. Are we together? I have found David my servant. Many of you have come to receive from the Lord. You have come to receive from the Lord as say an intelligent entrepreneur and that's wonderful. You have come to receive from the Lord as a man of God, a businessman, a career man or woman. I have a very disturbing message for you. The anointing is not looking for a man of God. The anointing is not looking for a career person. The anointing is not looking for a businessman. The anointing is looking for my servant. What does it take to be a servant of God? There are two biblical requirements to be called a servant of God. Let me give it to you very quickly. Number one is found in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. The Bible says, and I read, and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You shall seek me. That means if you claim to be seeking me and you do not find me, a part of your heart lied to you that it is only when all of you is in pursuit of me that you will find me. Listen carefully. There are many people who will tell you, I am seeking the Lord. I want to know him. And that may be sincere. But there is a law. It's called the law of encounter. That you will only seek me and truly find me. When you search for me with all your heart. The personality who represents encounters in scripture is the man Jacob. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 28 when you read that Jacob came to a place called Luz and he lay there to sleep at night and he lay upon a stone and the Bible says he had a vision of the night and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens. Am I right on that? And he saw angels ascending and descending. Is it not amazing that all kinds of spiritual activities were happening there and yet there was no encounter. It did not impact on Jacob's life. When he woke up, he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this must be the gate of heaven, even the house of God. Watch this. Jacob misused that opportunity because his heart was not prepared. Now, when you study your Bible, the next phase of, jo of Jacob's life will be about 20 years of misery and pain in the house of Laban. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 32, another opportunity comes now. This time around, he was a wealthy man. He had his wives. He had all kinds of things. And here's what the Bible says. He dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. The Bible says when he was alone. Can you just play the keyboard for me? Just, just flow, just something, yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he was alone, when he dropped the certificate aside and said, thank you, but I want to seek who is higher and greater than you. When you drop the ambitions and everything, the Bible says when Jacob was alone, there came a man one more time. You missed it in chapter 28. Now let's see how prepared you are. Whether you have now become my servant. And the Bible says when Jacob was alone. At that point nothing else mattered. At that point it was not his wives again. At that point it was not his cattle. Not his wealth. Not his ego. Not the battle between him and Esau. Those things became petty. His attention and his gaze was on that encounter. And the Bible says he held on to him. And he said leave me. 
for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go. I know the consequence of letting you go. I misused that opportunity in chapter 28. And 20 years of my life went down as a result of the absence of your presence and your power. I will not let you go. I rather let every other thing go. I rather let my ego go. I rather let my ambition go because I know that when I have you, I have every other thing. It says, leave me for the day break it. I am showing you the protocol to be genuinely anointed until everything that supposedly carries value in your life bows to the Lordship of the King. You will never genuinely be anointed. I show you why our generation continues to search for power. Sometimes in vain. Because we carry the mundane luggages of all kinds of things. And then we just hope to add God to the luggage. No. Leave me for the day breaketh. You have your wives. You have your cattle. You are rich. And he said no. I have come to a point where I realize that my life outside of you, even in the midst of all that I have, is vanity. And then he said, all right, let the transition process begin. What is your name? How does God bless a man by talking about his name? Not his situation. What is your name? Your name, your identity. A representation of your value a summation of everything that your life had been what is your name I know you are a professor he's asking you because he wants to change your name what is your name I'm an intelligent person by my strength I am the leading expert in my company but what is your name the, the anointing is looking for a certain posture it says I am Jacob it says thou shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have contended you have power with God and yet you have prevailed now watch what God calls the blessing for many years I read that scripture and it disturbed me here's how Jacob came to God here's how he returned how does a man come to meet God whole and return back incomplete? And the Lord said, that is how I bless. Is it not in your Bible? <laughs> that a man encounters God and he says, you want to carry my grace? I will have to touch that point of strength in your life that makes you sufficient without me. So that forever there will be an indication in your life that without me he can do nothing. I'm showing you what it takes to be called the servant of God. It is beyond just wearing a nice suit. It is beyond just holding a mic and being called a pastor. There is a process in the spirit. I tell you I saw it's a very strong anointing here. This is my people you're going to have to help me here. Eh? Can you look for strings for me and just, just, just flow? You are in for an experience within the next few minutes that we have here. Listen, because I believe that among the people seated here, there are some of you, the mantle, listen, this is not just, don't shout amen yet. The mantle of your destiny has been searching for you. But you see, it's not looking for an expert. It's not looking for an ambitious man of God who wants a crowd. No, I have found, help them please. I have found, help them. The anointing of the spirit is moving now already. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Help them. I have found David. But I'm looking for my servant. Please bring them out. Just bring them out gently in front here. I have found David, but I'm looking for my servant. I have found a musician, but I'm looking for my servant. I'm not just talking about a good voice to sing. Please make sure they are not injured. Just drop them somewhere in front there. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. Listen to me. When you come to God, that celebrity mindset 
of wanting to use the anointing to be famous you will never find the anointing that way the anointing is for servants not just celebrity but strangely so the anointing will so lift you and cause the nations to celebrate God in your life but hear me ladies and gentlemen I came with a mantle and an anointing this morning to stir up a fire to stir up a fire to stir up a fire upon your spirit man I have found David I have found David you provide the fire listen to the song how provide the sacrifice he doesn't provide the sacrifice you provide the spirit please get something to cover them so that you don't expose them. now I will open up inside Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Listen, man of God, it is not that God cannot lift you to become a mighty vessel, it is that this pride that is hidden behind I just want to be anointed so that when I heal the sick they will say Joshua Selman is a great man you will never find God that way listen to me when you get to a place of repentance genuine brokenness where there is nothing else to be seen that you hide behind the cross and your desire is for Jesus to be seen more than an ambition more than the desire for fame more than the desire to be famous that my desire is to see Jesus exalted across the nations now you have become my servant I have found David to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you that lady wearing blue I'm seeing oil coming on your head that lady wearing blue is a new season for your life in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for you will never be the same again open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray cry unto God from the depth of your heart listen hear me ladies and gentlemen the first prayer we are going to pray is a genuine prayer of repentance Lord every pride every flesh everything hidden within my heart I bring it to the throne and I cry that you show me mercy purify my heart purify my motive purify my desires please open your mouth and pray purify my heart I have found David God has found you but he's looking for his servant God has found a musician but he's looking for a worshiper God has found a preacher but he's looking for a vessel God has found a businessman but he's looking for a financial apostle make sure you are praying don't be distracted no weapon formed against you will prosper you just focus on this prayer the miraculous becomes easy when your heart is true and sincere exalted I above the worship of the people of the earth 
I see the Lord. I see the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King. You're the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forevermore. Go ahead and pray. Porch my heart. Porch my heart. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It says, but in a great house, there are all kinds of vessels, some unto honor, some unto dishonor. It says, if a man will purge himself, if a man will purge himself, Jacob, you can become Israel if you purge yourself. That man becomes a vessel of honor, meat for the master's use. If someone pray, take everything. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender to you everything I give to you I'm withholding nothing withholding nothing will you give yourself away that's what his majesty is asking you now Will you give yourself away so you can use me? Give yourself away. Oh, will you give yourself away so you can use me? Now hear me. Condition number two to be called the servant of God number one is your heart the state of brokenness the second is your desire to live your life to serve his purposes eternally I simply call it Jesus revealed Jesus glorified that that becomes the theme of your life whether in business whether in ministry whether in family, that your entire life revolves around this theme to see Jesus revealed and to see Jesus glorified. When these conditions are met, you have become the servant of God. I have found David, but I found him with all kinds of lusts and flesh and, and disorganization just wanting to use the anointing to promote an ambition it doesn't come that way David become my servant by submitting to the governing authority of Jesus and then having a new creed and a new theme that governs your life that my entire life revolves around the revelation and the exaltation of the Christ it doesn't matter whether it is in ministry it doesn't matter whether it's in politics that I'm here to promote the interests of heaven listen to me ladies and gentlemen when you assume that posture in the spirit you have become his servant you are ready to become like a trophy that he will display to the nations and show men the excellency of what it means to carry genuine power. Can I tell you, when you study your Bible and when you study modern history, history
ministries full of men and women who though ordinary they became servants of God indeed and certain mantles and graces came upon their lives you study men like Catherine and women like Catherine Kuhlman you talk about it right here in your soil great men and women and today in our world men like fathers fathers of faith like our very father Baba Deboe and our mother they speak may you be blessed and you see doors open it is not just in the words there is a covenant there is blood that is dripping on that altar a testament of death a testament of sacrifice now the nations are waiting for the revelation of God that will come through your life you are here gathered hear me the Holy Spirit is speaking to you do not allow destinies go down because of carelessness do not allow destinies connected to you to go down hear me imagine if they were never a Billy Graham imagine if they were never a Baba Deboye imagine if they were never a Reinhard Bonke do you know how many people would have gone to hell now it is your turn are you going to allow flesh are you going to allow flesh to lead you down while destinies are destroyed or will you rise up will you rise up and say Lord as far as I'm concerned count on me you can count on me with the destiny of nations open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray something is about to fall in this place mm. man of God pray preachers pray it's time to carry genuine power the earnest expectation creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God it's time for every altar and every pulpit to carry genuine fire genuine fire America hear me God wants to restore fire authentic fire fire that leads to soul save fire that leads to life transform someone is praying forget about who is at your left and right focus on Jesus and cry from the depth of your spirit servant in business a witness an ambassador in politics in education in family someone pray someone pray for some of you your family members are depending on your transformation and your empowerment That our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Now, listen, everyone. Listen to me. Please lend me your attention. Lend me your attention. I shared yesterday that there are two ways to receive the power of God. Number one, 
is directly from God through encounters. Help a lady who begins to run now and shout under the anointing. Please make sure that they don't injure themselves, whether you're an usher or not. Hallelujah. Watch this. Number two, the second way to receive is through impartation. And I told you this morning that impartation is a transference of possibilities. That when God anoints a man, he intends for that anointing to reach everyone who is hungry and ready to receive. Not just for one person to hold it and merchandise it unfortunately. Are we together? Now hear me. We are going to get straight into the miracle service that is already on. There are three things that will happen here as my assignment this morning. Number one is an impartation that is already ongoing. Number two, I am going to be praying for the sick and that includes every oppression, whatever it is. You can stand in for yourself and stand in for your loved ones. Believe me when I tell you by God and upon the grace that is on our Father, there is no devil against your destiny that will remain after this encounter. You will marvel and wonder at the power of God. And then number three, prophetically, we are going to pray over our families and all the issues of concern and lift up a cry to heaven when we're done and ask the Lord to visit us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, I want to pray. I ask the people to come out not just for a show. There is a reason why I ask. Now, I'm going to make three requests. Number one, whether you are an usher or not, if someone is under the anointing close to you, as much as you are receiving for yourself, please do well to manage them so they don't injure themselves. Are we together? And then eventually, so that we do not have this place becoming so chaotic, we may need to ask one or two of you to please volunteer and help when the time is needed. So please do avail yourself if there's need to manage people. This is not just some misbehavior of people. There are many things happening to those you see under the anointing. There are deliverances, there are healings, there are breakthroughs, and there are impartations. Now I want to pray for you. Many years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. And when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, many of you may have heard it in my encounters. He stretched his hand towards me. And when he stretched his hand towards me, light at his brilliance left his majesty, Jesus, and entered into me. Listen, how I survived is something that is mysterious you cannot receive that kind of life now unfortunately and i say this respectfully today many claim to have seen jesus many claim to even spend all the time with him but we cannot see that evidence of a genuine encounter go and read your bible it took me more than one year to recover from that encounter i was not myself again the world became like a foreign place. But in another encounter, the Lord spoke to me. Please listen. He said to every city and to every nation and every region I will send you to, in every meeting, there must be someone in that meeting that the light that came from me to you, that that light must rest upon the person. That is why you see all of these manifestations. It doesn't necessarily make us anything. It is not some celebrity man of God. This is not what we are here to do. We are here to reveal Jesus. But I'm telling you that you are immersed in a cloud of glory right now. And as I begin to pray for you, I'm going to be releasing grace from heaven to rest upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus everyone here who has the call of God upon his life that God has called you to serve in the ministry I release grace upon you now take that fire 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 America I bring you the fire of revival authentic apostolic revival take that fire take that fire take that fire let it burn in your spirit let it burn in the churches let it burn in your homes let it burn in the hospital let it burn in the school take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ the call of God upon your life it's time for that evangelistic call to find expression it's time for that pastoral call there are some of you who are called to be intercessors there are many women here like Anna the prophetess may that grace come upon you intercessors intercessors men of fire women of fire 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 I want to pray right now I believe that there are people here who will become end time financial apostles men who will be trusted with the wealth of nations I don't know where you are but I stretch my hands may that mantle of a kingdom financier let it come upon you men who will sponsor the gospel men who will sponsor the gospel empowered by grace empowered by God Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.